this lecture, I want to show you the index function from a different angle. Most cases of index, it's, it's used with a match function and it's used to get data or do complex lookups from larger data tables. So in this case, it's a bit different. I'm going to use the index function to select between different lists. Here I have list one, list two, list three. And what I want is that if the user selects two here, that it shows the app names that are in list two. And if they select three, they get the app names from list three. I'm going to use the index here. First argument is the array. So what should it be? Should it be this entire range here? Should it be just this? So remember that index is like a GPS, right? And it needs a map. And the map that I give it should be the map where my answer is in. It's not necessary to give it areas where for sure my answer is not there. And in this case, my answer should be one of these three because the next cell below it should be one of these three. So I don't need to include all of them here. I just need to include this. The next argument is the row number argument, and I just have one row. So I can leave it empty, I can put a zero, or I can put a one, it's the same thing. So I'm gonna leave it empty. As the column argument, what should I pick here? That's my list, right? Let's get the fixing right. I just have to fix the G41 cell. I can leave these dynamic, right? Because when I pull this down, I'm pulling down my index area, I'm pulling down my map, and then I'm moving columns by the number that's selected up here. So I'm just gonna highlight this because I don't want my formatting to be impacted. I'm gonna press F2, Control Enter. Now, when I select one, that's from list one and three, that's from list three. Another way of writing this is to use the other argument that the index allows, and that's using references and area numbers. It's something that I don't use a lot. It's very uncommon. I generally use the first argument, but I'm going to show you how that works because there might be cases that you should use this one instead. If I was using this and I still wanted each of these to be in separate cells, what I have to do is whenever you're planning to reference more than one area, open your brackets again because we're all going to keep this in the same argument. And I'm going to say my first area is this one. In this case, it's actually one cell. My second area is this one. And my third area is this one. And I'm going to close brackets. And then I leave the reference argument and go to the row argument. And here, well, I just have one row and one column in each of these references. And then comes the area numbers. I have three areas here. Which area do I want? Well, that again depends on the selection here. So I'm going to fix that, close brackets, and I get the same result. So if someone changes here, everything changes as well. So it's another way of writing this. Now, what if I wanted a drop down? So instead of having them in separate cells, I wanted that if the user, let's just bring this here. So if the user makes a selection here, that they get a drop down of the apps that are valid in that list. Okay, so how can I do that? So remember this argument reference, it takes different areas, right? In this example that I just did now, I selected one cell per area, but I don't have to do that. I can select the entire area. But before I do that, I'm gonna open bracket again, so don't forget that because they're gonna all stay inside the same argument. Now, this is my second area. This is my third area. I'm just gonna fix my areas all by pressing F4, close brackets. 
the row argument, I want all rows. So I'm gonna just leave that argument and for the column argument, I want all the columns that are included. So in this case, I just have one column per area. So I can skip that one as well. Now for the area, I want it to be this. And that's something that I'm gonna fix as well. Now I just see this one but that's only because I've written the formula in front of this. It can't give me all the other ones in the same cell. But my validation dropdown can, right? So I should be able to copy this and put it in data validation. I'm gonna paste it and say, okay. Well, it doesn't like it. It says you may not use reference operators or array constants for data validation criteria. So it takes some formulas, but it seems like it doesn't like this formula. But that's okay, because there is an option that you can use. So when you come across like func Excel fun features that don't directly take your formulas, for example, chart areas as well, they don't like that you put and formulas as chart ranges, you can use Name Manager. What Name Manager does is that it gives a name to your formula and it holds it, it memorizes that formula in that name, and then you can provide that name to the validation dropdown list. Think of it like this. For some reason, the validation, it can't digest that formula in that form and the name manager makes it digestible for it. To add it, we just go to new, give it a name. So I'm gonna put it app list and I'm gonna paste my formula in there. That looks fine, so close. Now I'm gonna go to data validation. Let's try it with the name instead. This is called app list and say okay. And now we have the list of apps that belong to list two. So if I select my list to three, I go here, I have commuta, infink, accord, so that's what belongs to list three and for one, the same way. Okay, so that's another way of using the index function. You can see the index function is really versatile and it can apply to many different situations. Now here, you could have used other formulas as well. So for example, the offset formula would have also worked fine here. But generally when I'm creating files, if I have the choice between index and offset, I go with index because offset is a volatile formula and although it doesn't have impact on your spreadsheet in terms of calculation times, if it's small, it does have an impact if you have a large spreadsheet. So go with index wherever you can. I hope you enjoyed this lecture and don't forget to subscribe to get updates on new videos like this one when they come out.